Looks like we're going live. I'm going to make sure that my sound is hearing, and it is awesome. Make sure it says live. Okay, we're definitely live. Okay, so today is December 24th. This is Christmas Eve uh, reading, and we've all sang all the Christmas carols and everything, but I do want to sing something that I learned in my studies of Hebrew, and it's very, very much about the time of the season, reason for the season of celebrating the birth of our Savior. It's John 3.16 in Hebrew. Elohim et haolam at tinatam et nyo yekiro lam yan lo yovan kohamam yin bo ila yin kachaya e aolam for God so loved the world that he gave his son so that all who believes in him oh i don't know how to sing it in english with that tune oh that's too funny well anyway kiko ahav elohim et ha'olam at kinatan et myo yachiro lamyan lo yovad ko hama aminbo ila yen chal chayei olam for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the reason for this season, is to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Amen. And today's insight scripture is going to be Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 5 and 7 through 12. And then the reading is going to be, um, let's see where my book go. It's going to be Habakkuk. Uh, verses or chapters one through three, yeah. all of Habakkuk uh, basically, and then Revelation 15. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the precious gift of eternal life that you gave us through your Son. We thank you, Father, that knowing that we could not keep the law, and that the law was to show us that we needed the Savior, that you became flesh, that you became the second person of the three-person Godhead. And you sent your only begotten son through the Holy Spirit to become a baby from a virgin, Mary, who lived a sinless life and on the cross took the sins and the punishment that was for us on himself, who was sinless and without blame. And he paid the price in full for us so that we could be restored and be made righteous again in your eyes through the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary for us. And that we could have that relationship with you that you wanted from the beginning when you said, let us create man in our image. And we thank you, Father, and help us to always remember the sacrifice that you made and that Jesus made for us. And to know that our lives are not our own and that they were bought at a price a precious price of your only son who suffered and died in our place. And for that, we are eternally thankful. And I ask that you bless the reading and the hearing of your word, Lord. And I bless you. Read. I mean, I, ask, I, I pray that you bless the listeners to your word when it's read and to those that, that are on fire for being in a relationship with you, Lord, and to further their relationship and their walk with you by reading your word and sharing it with those that do not know your son. Give us the desire and the the fire that we need, Father, to share the gospel with as many as we can. We pray you put them in our paths, Lord, so that we can plant the seeds that only you can water while there's still time. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Baruch HaBashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, soon, Jesus, soon. So Matthew 2, 1 through 5, 7 through 12. The word magi, it says in Matthew 2, verse 1, is rendered wise men in some translations. We know very little about them. We're not told how many men came. 
only that they gave three gifts to Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They weren't kings, and scripture doesn't name them, although some traditions have given them the names Balthazar, Casper, and, and Melchior. I don't, Melchior, I don't know how to say that name. Because Herod ordered the killing of baby boys two years old and under. Okay, this brings me to the reading last night. You remember I was talking about, uh, I believe, uh, I forgot the two stars now, I think it was Jupiter and Venus, that they come so close, almost in line with each other, enough to where it resembles a star, and that's David's star. That's the star that the wise men saw, and they followed it till they found the Savior. Now, by the time they found him, it was in a two-year period, and it took them to find him. You know, all of these uh, manger scenes all show that the wise men showed up at the the place where Jesus was born, and that's not so. Because if you read in Matthew's account, it'll say that they found the child with the mother in the floor of the house. I guess she was sitting in the floor with, with Jesus, but he was a child at this point. Because he was uh, under two, but he was not an infant anymore, a newborn. And so... That's one of the examples I was talking about, about something significant that would happen in the two years when that star would appear. Jesus was born, and that's one of them. And I never did find that video, um, I need to though, where I was talking about the different things that happened each time that that star did appear. Or We call it a star, but it's actually the two planets aligning to where they resemble or they look like a star because they're so close together. One's farther than the other, so it looks like one's going one way and one's going the other to look like a cross or a star, whatever. Anyway, so that's why Herod, when he realized that he had been duped by these wise men, realized that they were not coming back to tell him where this king of the Jews was born, he ordered that all babies two and under because at this point he knew that child could be up to two years old by now he that's why he ordered them all to be murdered that were two and under so that way he could as far in his insane mind thinking he could kill this this foretold birth of this human you know that jesus is the only person in the history of mankind that whose birth was foretold that was prophesied and it came through micah Two five or was it two five that I read or five two five two, where it says O oh, Bethlehem Ephratha Ephratha Eph, Eph, whatever it is I can't remember it now, it tells the exact birthplace where he was born and did you know that that same location, is also where King David was born. Anyway, let's get to the reading. Okay, so. Um, killing a baby boy is two years and under, and so now we know what the significant thing that also happened in that two-year period with Herod doing that. We know they didn't come to the manger on the very night of Christ's birth. Okay, I didn't really read further, so I see that they're actually saying that. And if you read Luke 2, 15 and 16, but to a house in Bethlehem sometime later, Matthew 2, 11 by KT Sim. See, I don't read this stuff ahead of time. I just post it up, get it ready, and I didn't even do my spell check, I don't think. Oh, well, we'll, we'll live. And the scripture reads, visit of wise men. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search and care and go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And this the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their gifts, their treasures, and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And the story is the Christmas star. If you find that star, you can always find your way home. 
These were my father's famous words when he taught me how to locate the North Star as a child. Dad had served in the armed forces during wartime, and there were moments when his life depended on being able to navigate by the night sky. So he made sure I knew the names and locations of several constellations, but it was being able to find Polaris that mattered most of all. Knowing that star's location meant I could gain a sense of direction whenever I, wherever I was and find and and wherever I was and find where I was supposed to be. Scripture tells us of another star of vital importance. Magi from the east learned men, learned men, from an area encompassed by Iran and Iraq today had been watching for signs in the sky of the birth of the one who was to come, who was to be God's king. Sorry, I need to quit trying to I'm shelling pecans so I can make some more pecan pie and and candy and all this stuff. So I'll just stop time through reading. Uh, one who was to be God's king for his people. They came to Jerusalem asking, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. Matthew 2, verses 1 and 2. Astronomers don't know what caused the star of Bethlehem to appear, but the Bible reveals that God created it to point the world to Jesus, the bright morning star, Revelation 22:16. Christ came to save us from our sins and guide us back to God. Follow him and you'll find your way home. Amen. And this was written by James Banks, your eternal home at that. In what practical way will you follow Jesus today? What can you do this week to share his love with others? Dear Jesus, thank you for being the way to our forever home in heaven. Please help guide us by your light today. And it has for further study, you can read Why Should I Trust God? And I put that link in the description. It's underneath my references. And then it refers again to Matthew 2.10. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Whoops. Wow, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. So we're reading Habakkuk uh, 1 through 3, which is the whole book of Habakkuk. The prophet questions God's judgments. The burden which the prophet, and he's a minor prophet, by the way, Habakkuk saw. The prophet's question, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. Their strife and contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore perverse judgment proceeds. The Lord's reply, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded. For I will work a a work in your days which you would not believe though it were told though it were told you for indeed i am raising up the chaldeans a bitter and hasty nation which marches through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs they are terrible and dreadful okay just making sure it's still hearing me okay because i don't want the mic too close to my mouth because it sounds terrible uh, okay, the second half of verse 7. Their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses also are swifter than leopards and more fierce than evening wolves. Their chargers charge ahead. Their cavalry comes from afar. They fly as the eagle that hastens to eat. They all come for violence. Their faces are set like the east wind. They gather captives like sand. They scoff at kings and princes are scorned by them. They deride every stronghold, for they heap up earthen mounds and seize it. Then his mind changes and he transgresses. Well, if I can get my mouse to work here. He commits offense, ascribing his power to his God. The prophet's second question, are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, you have appointed them for judgment. O oh, rock, you have marked them for correction. You are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devours a person more righteous than he? Why do you make men like fish of the sea, like creeping things that have no ruler over them? 
They take up all of them with a hook. They catch them in their net and gather them in their dragnet. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Therefore, they sacrifice to their net and burn incense to their dragnet because by them they share, their share is sumptuous and their food plentiful. Shall they therefore empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity? Habakkuk 2. The just shall live by faith. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. The just live by faith. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end I, it, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Woe to the wicked. Indeed, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, and he does not stay at home, because he enlarges his desire as hell. And he is like death and cannot be satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations and heaps up for himself all peoples. Will not all these take up a proverb against him and the taunting riddle against him and say, woe to him who increases what is not his, how long? And to him who loads himself with many pledges, will not your creditors rise up suddenly? Will they not awaken who oppress you? and you will become their booty. Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the people shall plunder you because of men's blood and the violence of the land and the city and of all who dwell in it. Woe to him who covets evil gain for his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of disaster. You give shameful counsel to your house, cutting off many peoples and sin against your soul. For the stone will cry out from the wall, and the beam from the timbers will answer it. Woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed, who establishes a city by iniquity. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the peoples labor to feed the fire, and nations weary themselves in vain? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbor, pressing him to your bottle, even to make him drunk, that you may look on his nakedness. You are filled with shame instead of glory. You also drink and be exposed as uncircumcised. The cup of the Lord's right hand will be turned against you, and utter shame will be on your glory. For the violence done to Lebanon will cover you, and the plunder of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and the violence of the land and the city, and of all who dwell in it. What profit is the image that it makes, that, the, uh, that its maker should carve it? The molded image, a teacher of lies. Move, kitty. that the maker of its mold should trust in it to make mute idols? Woe to him who says to wood, awake, to silent stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, yet in it there is no breath at all. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And then Habakkuk. Habakkuk 3, the prophet's prayer. Dang it, looking for something. Uh, a, prayer, uh, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, on Shugayanath. Uh, Shug I should look that up. O oh Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Demon, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Sila. His glory covered the heavens. Oh, there is. Yay. His glory covered the heavens, and the praise was full of his, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was, was like the light he had raised 
flashing from his hand, and there his power was hidden. Before him went pestilence, and fever followed at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and startled the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian trembled. O oh Lord, were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea? That you rode on your horses, your chariots of salvation? Your bow was made quite ready. Oaths were sworn over your arrows, Selah. You divided the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of your arrows they went, at the shining of your glittering spear. You marched through the land in indignation. You trampled the nations in anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people. For salvation with your anointed, you struck the head from the house of the wicked. By laying bare from foundation to neck, Sila. Trying to find some, some words, but I guess I don't have them in my purse anymore. Darn it. You thrust through with his own arrows the head of his villages. They came out like a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was like feasting on the poor in secret. <sighs> Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once here. I'm looking for something because I'm going to read it to the end of this reading, but I cannot. I lost my glasses now. Fabulous. Wow. Okay. Um, you walked through the sea with your horses through the heap of great waters. When I heard my body trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. The rottenness, uh, rottenness entered my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade them with his troops. A hymn of faith. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high heels to the chief musician with my stringed instruments. Man. Okay, so I'm looking, and we'll see, we still have Revelation 15, prelude to the bold judgments. And I'm looking, let's see, then I saw another sign in heaven. Ah, there it is. Uh, Baruch, Atah, Adonai, Elohim. No, no, that's not right. Okay. Uh, great and marvelous, seven angels having the last, uh, having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. It. After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened, and out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, and having their chests girded with golden bands, then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls. Full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. And that concludes this reading. And what I was trying to find was the ironic blessing. I can, I can sing it. I just don't know what to say. Isn't that weird? But. 
I haven't sang it in so long that I'm afraid I'll mess up. There it is. I'll mess up the uh, words, but I can't see it in my Jewish Bible here because of the tiny, tiny, tiny print. And I have no clue what I did with my glasses I had just a little bit ago. The Aaronic Benediction. Yeverechacha Adonai v'yishmerecha Yeer Adonai panav elecha v'chunika Yesa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. Yeverechacha Adonai Veish Merecha Yair Adonai Pana Elecha Vichunika Yasa Adonai Pana Elecha Vesen Hashalom Vesen Hashalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and grant you peace. That's number six, verses 24 through 26. And I again wish you Merry Christmas. I hope you all have a blessed day tomorrow. I'll be thinking of my church family since I didn't get to see you today. Satan's still beating up on me, but that's okay. He won't shut me up. I'll learn sign language if he does. So I hope you all have a blessed rest of your evening, and I will start working on these study ones. And I'll get those posted and uh, start getting those caught up. So bye for now. Shalom, and know that Jesus loves you, and I love you. And remember, there's never a pit too deep that Jesus cannot pull you out. And he stands at the door, Revelation 3.20, stands at the door of your heart and knocks. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if a man hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and him with me. So Jesus is a gentleman. He won't force himself on you. But if you don't already know him as your personal Lord and Savior, I beg you, do not delay. Do not let Satan lie to you anymore saying, oh, you've got time, because time is so extremely short. With everything going on in the Middle East and Israel, it has all been depicted in Ezekiel 37, 38, 39, Isaiah, um, what was it, uh, Jeremiah 49, Isaiah 17. Oh, anyways, shalom for now.